Hello, this is Jesus in Scripture, Week 8, The Exile and Return. Thank you for watching today. My name is John Wright, and I'm teaching a weekly Bible study that is on the Facebook and YouTube platform of Southeastern Church of Christ. My prayer is that you will be blessed by the lessons found in God's Word. Last week I discussed the prophet Jeremiah. This week is the topic of the exile and return. The exile and return is the period of history that immediately follows Jeremiah. It is the time that the people of Israel are carried off into exile by the Babylonians after, after they are invaded and carried off. Uh, Jeremiah prophesied that God would resettle the people back into the land of promise after a period of 70 years had passed. I have always been fascinated by this very dark period of the history of God's chosen people. The brutality of the ancient empires is well documented in history. The idea that any people could maintain their identity after being captured and resettled among the nations is impossible unless God is protecting his people and using the nations to accomplish his will. The nation of Judah in exile and return is a death and resurrection story in the most real sense. They're, they were protected by God in a miraculous way. Think about the probability that a remnant of the Jews could be protected inside a bubble that allows them to keep their identity even though they're captives in, a, in the ba ba pagan Babylonian empire. And then this world empire falls while they're still captive inside this bubble, inside the Babylonian empire. That empire falls and is, is, is taken over by the rise of the Persian empire. The kings of the Persian empire are caused to be favorable to the Jews so much so that the king pays the expenses of eventually resettling the Jews back to their homeland, traveling sometimes as far as 750 miles from where they were settled to Jerusalem. In my opinion, this is the greatest miracle of the Old Testament. And how did the Jews get into this predicament? In the last chapter of Second Chronicles, it explains the reason for Judah's captivity, and it reads as follows. And, and this is just a brief history uh, lesson that we find in, in the Bible. Chap chapter, verse 14 of the last chapter of Second Chronicles says, Furthermore, all the leaders of the priests and the people became more and more unfaithful. They were following all the detestable practices of the nations and defiling the temple of the Lord, which he had consecrated in Jerusalem. The Lord, the God of their ancestors, sent word to them through his messengers again and again because he had pity on his people and on his dwelling place, but they mocked God's messengers, despised his words and scoffed at his prophets until the wrath of the Lord was aroused against his people and there was no remedy. He brought up against them the king of the Babylonians who killed the young men with the sword in the sanctuary and did not spare young men or women, the elderly or the infirm. God gave them all into the hands of Nebuchadnezzar. He carried them to Babylon and all the articles of the temple of God, both large and small, and the treasures of the Lord's temple and the treasures of the king and his officials. They set fire to God's temple and broke down the wall of Jerusalem. They burned all the palaces and destroyed everything of value there. He carried into exile to Babylon the remnant who escaped from the sword, and they became servants to him and his successors until the kingdom of Persia came to power. The land enjoyed its Sabbath rests all the time of its desolation it rested until the 70 years were completed in fulfillment of the word that the Lord had spoken by Jeremiah. In the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, in order to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah, the Lord moved the heart of Cyrus, king of Persia, to make a proclamation through his realm and also to put it in writing. This is what Cyrus, king of Persia, says. The Lord, the God of heaven, has given me all the kingdoms of the earth. 
and he has appointed me to build a temple for him in Judah. Any of his people among you may go up, and may the Lord their God be with them. We see that the remnant of Judah was carried away by the Babylonians, who later fell to the Persians. God is doing all this, causing the rise and fall of empires to make it clear to us that it was no other than his doing. God is preserving his people in a time of war and chaos, keeping them from being swallowed up by the nations until the eventual return to the promised land. We read in Ezra, we read in Ezra and Nehemiah where the people are sent back to, and, and the temple and the walls are rebuilt. There is so much written about the exile. Ezekiel, Daniel, Esther show us how God preserved his people during many plots to destroy them. Daniel in the lion's den, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And they were cast into the fiery furnace and preserved and saved. And Esther, who, that there was a plot revealing, uh, revealed to Esther that, there were, that someone was wanting to annihilate all the Jews. That plot was, was defeated because Esther had faith and, and went to the king. There are many enemies attacking the Jews, but God rescued them for the sake of us all. I want to go back to the texts I am using for the foundation of this study that teaches us that Jesus was present throughout the Old Testament. I've been referring to John 5.39 and it says this, You study the scriptures diligently because you think in them you have eternal life. These are the very scriptures that testify about me. We also saw that Jesus on the road to Emmaus said these words, How foolish you are, and slow to believe all the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. The people could not keep the law no matter how hard they tried, because we are all slaves to sin. God preserved the line of David for a specific purpose of bringing Jesus into the world so that he could end our captivity to sin and death. Jesus has come to set the captives free. Luke 4, 14 through 21 says this, Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit, and the news about him spread throughout the whole countryside. He was teaching in their synagogues and everyone praised him. He went to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And on the Sabbath day, he went into the synagogue as was his custom. He stood up to read and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. Unrolling it, he found the place where it is written, the spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Then he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant and sat down. The eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened upon him. He began by saying to them, today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Jesus came to set the oppressed free. The Jews of Jesus day were still oppressed. They did not understand the reason they were oppressed it was because of sin. But only in Jesus is there real freedom. The exile in return teaches us that we do not have the means to save ourselves. We who are loved by God are not abandoned by God. Jesus has proclaimed the year of Jubilee, where the promise of God is completely restored. The promise that through your seed, which is the seed of Abraham, all nations on earth shall be blessed. It was fulfilled in the coming of Jesus. John 1 17 says, for the, true, for the law was given through Moses and grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Ephesians 2, 8 through 10 reveals the truth. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not of, from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works so that no one can boast. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. The exile in return 
is a death and resurrection example played out in human history so that we can plainly see the work that God is doing through Jesus Christ. And that, and that is part of a very big heavenly plan that has to do with us, each and every one of us. The theme of death and life keeps getting repeated over and over in the pages of the Old Testament. The gospel is foreshadowed, foreshadowed in the accounts of death and resurrection. According to Acts 3.15, Jesus is the author of life. Whenever death gives way to life, Jesus is there. Whether we are a slave to sin or dead in our sin, we are in the same place. We're unable to do anything that can make us right with God. Paul, through the Holy Spirit, says it this way in Ephesians 2, 1 through 7. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving of wrath. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus, in order that in the coming ages he might show us the incomparable riches of grace expressed in his kindness in Jesus Christ. The greatest miracle of all is that through Jesus we are freed from sin and death. The devil's world empire and spiritual empire of powers and principalities will fall, but we who are in Christ are saved in the eternal kingdom of God. Jesus saves. It is the good news of the gospel. Thank you for listening. If you continue listening, I hope I am able to do one thing, and that is to demonstrate that I love the word of God. And I love it because it reveals the truth that God has loved us with an everlasting love. God bless you and thank you.